Okay, in step five, what we're actually doing is taking a look at some of the T accounts. So as you scroll down, you're going to see a variety of different T accounts that we used in the journaling of all of these transactions. Okay, and what we want to do is we're going to take a look at each one of the descriptions. Notice that this is something new we haven't done before. We're going to be actually writing in the T account, whether it was an adjusting entry, whether it was a closing entry, or whether it was a reversing entry, okay? And then we also have our journal information listed here. So what we're actually gonna do is clicking on this journal information. This was our first um, step that we did as we journalized our adjusting entries. So we're actually gonna take each of those as we scroll down here. Um, we're gonna go down and find interest receivable. I'm actually gonna click off of that so that stays visible. Okay, oh, look at that, popped right up. Okay, so with this one, what we did is we had a debit to interest receivable. So we come over here and we put in our date, which is December 31st. Okay, this was an adjusting entry, so we put a DJ period. Okay, and then the amount was $75. Okay, it's almost like posting, except they want you to see this happening in the actual T account. Okay. Now we need to go to our interest income, okay? And interest income with this one, we had a credit of $75, okay? So we come down here and we put in the 31st, oops, December 31. This was our adjusting entry. I keep one, I wanna write the whole thing, but I guess I don't need to, okay? Adjusting entry. Um, was for $75, okay? So far so good, hopefully, yes, okay? Then what we have is our one for our interest expense, so we need to go up and find interest expense, or I guess down to find interest expense, there we go. Okay, so interest expense is getting debited for $60. So again, we come down here, we put December 31. This was an adjusting entry, and it was for 60. And then we need to find interest payable. Again, December 31, this was an adjusting entry and credited for $60, okay? So hopefully so far so good, you're with me. Okay, let's scroll down and do our closing entries now. Okay, so we come down here, we need to go back to our interest income. So with our interest income, what's happening right here is again, we have December 31st, um, but this is being debited. So we come over here, we put in December 31. This is a closing, so C, we, I guess we actually spell out closing. Um, and then the amount that's happening here is 3,165. Now, if you look, that's actually the balance. If you take 3,090 plus 75, that's the closing amount right there. So right now, interest income is actually zeroed out at a zero balance, okay? Then we come over to our income summary. Income summary needs to be credited. December 31, this is a closing. 3165 okay now we need to do the same thing for interest expense we can actually just stay here and use our income summary account this is the closing amount right here debit of 1375 and now obviously if we were closing we would figure out our income summary and do all of our net income and all that jazz but we don't have to go that far with this one then we need to come back down and find interest expense Interest expense is being credited for $13.75. Again, if we look here, and we put in December 31, closing $13.75. $13.75 is the total of our balance plus that adjustment we just did. So now interest expense is at a zero balance. Hopefully that makes sense for everyone. Okay. Now let's come over to journal our reversing entries. Okay. We have to go back to interest income, okay? And interest income is going to be debited, oops, 
January 1. Okay, this is a reversing, so REV for reversing, and then it has $75. So right now, interest income is sitting with a balance of $75. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? Because remember, at this point right now, we'd be zeroed out. So now this has a debit balance of interest of, of $75. We also need to go to interest receivable. Interest receivable, remember, was a balance sheet account at the end of the year saying we were expected to receive $75. With a reversing entry, we actually wiped that out. And we credit it for $75. So now interest receivable is actually zeroed out. It's at a zero balance. Okay, same thing with our interest payable. We come down here to January 1. Interest payable was another balance sheet account saying that we owed people money. We actually are not going to anymore, so we put $60 in here. So again, that's going to zero this out, zeroing out interest payable. Now we're going to come over here to interest expense. Scroll on down. Interest expense is actually going to be credited for $60. So remember, this is another funny, one of those funny ones. Interest expense is normally a debit balance, but for a short period of time, it's going to sit with a credit. So right now, interest expense um, is has been zeroed out, but now we just put a credit balance of $60 in there. Okay, hopefully so far so good. Now we come over to our cash payments journal. And remember here, what we need to do is do our note payable. So let's scroll, note payable is going to be all the way at the top. We come up to note payable. Okay, note payable gets debited right now at this point. So we come over here to March 1. Nothing actually goes here. Okay, and we put in the 12,000. So remember at this point, notes payable is actually zeroed out. It's at a zero balance. Then let's go down to our interest expense. Okay, and right now we take March 1. Again, nothing's going on this one because it's not a closing, it's not a reversing, it's not an adjusting. Okay, um, and what happens is we put in $180, which is coming from this amount right here. And what happens is interest in expense would actually be sitting with a balance of 120, which is the amount of revenue that would be, or excuse me, the amount of expense that would be incurred during January, February, and March. Remember that $60 happened um, in November and December, but this 180 um, happens in January, February, and March. So the difference between those two is 120, which is what interest expense is actually sitting at right now, okay? Um, and it, it doesn't look like they have us do anything with our cash account, so we don't have to worry about the cash credit right there, okay? Um, so now what we need to do is do our last one for cash receipts. So again, we're going to go to our notes receivable. This one's going to be March 16. Nothing goes here, and instead we put in the 10000 Notes receivable gets zeroed out. The people that owed us that 10000 have paid us. And then we come down to our interest income down at the bottom. Okay, and this is being credited for $200. So we come down here, put in March 16th and 200. Okay, and at this point, right, we're going to be trying to figure out 200. Minus 75 is 125. That's the balance in our interest income account. So remember, um, we had had $75. That was the amount of interest income that we earned in December. And then 125 is going to be a, the amount that we earned in January, February, and March. So at the very bottom here, I just want to show you. They asked two things about what is the amount of interest income from the note receivable that's going to be shown for our, our income statements for 2001 and 2002. So the interest income for these ones is actually the difference between these two accounts. So if you look at our note receivable, remember in 20, 
I guess they say 2011. Um, 2011, it's actually the $75. At the end of the month, it says that we had interest income of $75. So that's how much would go here. And then in 2012, it's going to say that the difference between those two, remember 200 minus 75 is 125. So that's actually what's going to be shown on our second year. So remember the 75, which was, was earned in 2011, the 125 was what was earned in 2012. We're going to do the same thing for our interest expense here. i to try to get it so it's on the same view. The interest expense for 2011, remember, was $60. So we put 60 in here. Total interest earned over the life of that note payable was 180. So to find just how much we had during 2012, we would have to take 180 minus 60 and that would give us 120. And so again, just to reiterate, the $60 was the amount that was earned in 2011, and the 120 was the amount that was earned in 2012, okay? So that was quite a long work together. Um, hopefully that made some sense for you. I really encourage you to try to do the on your own, on your own, um, without looking at all of these. I know that it's only, um, completion points, but trying to do the best you can um, to get it without having to reference a whole bunch of things will help, especially as you get into the application and eventually the test. Okay.